So I have a lot of people asking me about how to use Unity's new input system, and there's lots of different ways that you can go about doing it, uh, but I thought I'd make a video here just kind of explaining how I use Unity's new input system um, as a way kind of for you to get started with it and maybe decide your own way that you want to interact with it. Uh, so when you're setting up Unity's new input system, first you have to go to the package manager. So let's go find uh, window package manager. And then in the Unity registry, I believe, should be an input system here. Unity, where's I? I, input system. So you can install it here, or what I normally do, just like, because it starts off in the, the uh, in project, is I'll just go over to the plus, and you can either do uh, add package from git URL if the add package by name is not here. Uh, otherwise, add package by name, com.unity, dot input system and this will add it as well um, so once this uh, adds itself the uh, you'll be prompted to restart your project so uh, I'll come back here once my project is restarted so now that my um, now that my unity project has restarted uh, we can go ahead and set things up but one thing I actually wanted to mention here is um, I believe if we, if we scroll down to uh, the input system here, this was actually on 1.4.4. Uh, That's one of the advantages of adding things by the name is that you always make sure you get the latest version that uh, sometimes isn't necessarily in the Unity registry. So that's uh, one reason why you might want to just uh, import using the name instead of from the Unity registry. But either way, you should get a relatively recent-ish version. Um, so uh, now that we've restarted our projects, we can actually go into project settings and then the, uh, should be in the player setting. So this is your build settings and, and such. Uh, if you go to the other settings and then you scroll down, there should be input somewhere here. Uh, did I missed it. Oh yes, active input handling. If you plan on using both the old system and the new system, you can leave it on both. But if you're just gonna be using the new input system, you might as well just switch it to new and then press apply, just so that you don't get that performance overhead. And then your project may restart again. And now once we're back, we can uh, go ahead and just start uh, setting some stuff up. One thing you're most likely gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna right click, go to create, down at the bottom here, there's an input actions. This is going to be uh, basically your input action asset. It's going to contain all of the inputs in your game that you want to use. So I'm going to call it input asset. And then in here, when we open it up, um, there's the action maps, which we can create one. And this is going to be something like uh, you're going to have a particular control scheme for gameplay. And you're going to have a particular game uh, control scheme for UI. It's so like, for example, um, in a game, your jump button might be the bottom face button on a controller, but say for UI, you have uh, a difference in Xbox and PlayStation and Switch controllers where Xbox and PlayStation have the bottom button as the confirm button, but Switch uses the uh, the uh, left, sorry, right button as the, uh, as the confirm button. So you can customize your actions there. But anyways, going back into gameplay, this is uh, the actual actions. So let's create one called jump for example, um, and then let's look through what kind of options we have. So when we're talking about an action, we have a bunch are basically two main types. There's the button and then there's the value. The value is just ba is allowing, gives you access to uh, like vector two. So like if you have a control stick that has an up, down and a left, right, you can choose uh, vector two, but, uh, or you can choose axis, which is just gonna be a single axis uh, float value so uh, like say for example you have the camera like a, in a let's say a first person shooter game you're going on from for looking around and moving you're going to want to use the uh, the vector two but um, maybe uh, in a racing game you have the acceleration pedal that's only one axis so you're going to use just the uh, the float axis here um, but I'm just going to go back to button and uh, so that's where all that stuff is. That's how you choose what type of action uh, that your input action is gonna be. 
And then under interactions here, we can actually customize uh, special types. So like a multi-tap, and then it'll give you options for that. Or in processors, you can invert the value. You can add a dead zone if it was a like a like an axis or something. You can scale it, you can clamp it, you can normalize it so that you can make it so that you're getting the value that you want in your script. Um, but for the button, for the jump, we're just gonna do a simple button here. Uh, and then you can add another one here. I'm gonna call it move. So yeah, so like for, uh, if this was a 2D game, which I've actually got a 2D, uh, if it was a side scroller, which this is a 2D template that I've got up here, uh, we could go to value and axis because left and right is just gonna be, uh, th those are the only ones that we're gonna use. Um, if this was a top-down game or a third-person game and we're moving in three dimensions, we're probably gonna wanna choose vector two. So I'll do that just for uh, simplicity's, or for more complexity's sake, I guess, not simplicity's sake. And then under here, this is where you're gonna decide what your bindings are actually gonna be. So for jump, uh, say for our gamepad, uh, I don't have a gamepad currently connected, but you can click on gamepad and then you can choose button south for jump is like the standard. Uh, it's called button south because it's a gen generic gamepad. If you wanted, you could scroll all the way down and you can get into specific uh, control schemes. So for the example of the UI confirm button, you can specify for switch, you're gonna use the A button. And then for Xbox, you're gonna use the A button, which are different. One would be button east and one would be button south. Uh, and then let's say for jump, we're going to add another binding, which is going to be the spacebar. So I can use listen here to go find the spacebar. And now when either of these buttons are pressed, it's going to trigger the jump action which is nice because then all you have to do is worry about jump in your code and then this is easily changeable in this window here in this asset. Then for move, let's say we're gonna use the, uh, the gamepad and we're gonna go to the uh, left stick for moving, but we want to be able to move with WASD as well. Instead of adding a binding, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a up, down, left, right composite. So this basically allows you to combine four inputs into one axis, in this case, one value. So we're gonna click on that and you'll see now there's the actual composites underneath here. So I'm gonna call this WASD. Up is going to be W. Down is going to be S. Left, let's make that A. And right is going to be D. So now these four will give us a vector two value, just like the left stick will. So now when either of these are pressed, we can, uh, we can just attach ourselves to the move in our, in our script and everything works properly. So now that that's done, we can save the asset, close it. Um, and then if we wanna use a, things in a script, we can uh, first, what we need to do is we actually need to make sure that this is gonna run in our scene because it's not gonna run by default. So I create a um, input action manager. And this is just basically in charge of enabling our input actions. So if you have multiple, you can add a list, but if you just have one, you can obviously just serialize the one. So I'm just gonna do that. So serialize field input action asset, in this case is the name of the, the map. And we're just gonna call it asset. And then in, uh, on awake, we're gonna say asset dot enable. That's gonna enable it. And then of course, it's a good idea to on disable, call asset disable. And of course you would do a, a for each loop if you were using a, a list of input action assets as well. Um, but this is just gonna make sure that this gets enabled in our scene and then disabled uh, when the scene, when it leaves the scene. So back into the inspector here, let's go into the editor. We can uh, just plop that on a, on a game object here and then select our, drag our input asset in there. And then that will load on the scene. Now in scripting, when you want to access these inputs, I'm just gonna call my uh, script a test script. Uh, you're gonna need to using unity engine dot input system, 
if you're using 2019, that won't add itself. If you're using 2022, it'll add itself automatically. Um, and then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna create a serialized field input action reference, not rebinding, put action reference, yes. Uh, let's have our move and our jump. Let's call it input. Jump input move input. Um, and now if we go back into our editor, you'll see that uh, if I plop this on, let's just plop it on the same game object here. Uh, the test script. You'll see now we get these input action references here. If I click here, you'll see there is some, there actually is a default input action somewhere. Um, but I know mine is called gameplay. So it's gonna be these two. One of these is gameplay jump, which uh, I believe I'm on move right now. So we'll choose gameplay move and then gameplay jump. And now those are assigned to those particular actions. And then you can rebind those if you want from the inspector, if you want. Um, but back in the script here now, um, there are a couple ways that we can get information out of this. So if you want to just be reading values in update, uh, like you would on the old input system, get is uh, like asking if the key is down or whatever, you can just call the, the name of the input action reference. So move input dot action dot read value and then ask, basically tell it what value you want it to be. So I know that we did a vector two here for the uh, for the move input. And then that's gonna return the float uh, during that frame or the, the vector two during that frame. So, so vector two uh, axis equals that. So the, that's how you can get a, a value every frame. But the nice thing about the, um, the the buttons like not using value and using buttons is that we can actually subscribe to events so i'm going to create an awake here and i'm going to create a couple functions here one is void on jump or actually just one function on jump and this is going to need to take an input action dot call that context you can call it whatever you want i usually call it ctx and then what we can do is we can make it so that this function is called every time the uh, jump action is done and it's called from the input action asset and not uh, we're not having to check for it in our update. So uh, on awake, we are going to call the uh, jump input dot action dot performed. So this is the this is the event performed is the event that's going to be called when the action is was performed by the user. And then we use the plus equals operator to do what's called subscribing to this event. And we'll basically tell it what uh, function we want. So on jump. And uh, again, this does have to have an input input action dot callback context as its parameter. If I take that out, you'll see we'll get a uh, we'll get an error here. So just make sure that that is the signature of the function that you're wanting to subscribe. Uh, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, on destroy or on disable, or at some point you're going to unsubscribe. So I just copy and paste this down here and change the plus to a minus. What will happen if you don't do this is if you reload the scene every other time your input won't work. So make sure you do this. It uh, can save a bit of a headache. Um, and now, I can just debug dot log in this. We'll just do this. Say uh, jumping. So there's jumping, and then we will. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll actually say uh, transform dot position dot trigger or actually no, transform.translate and we'll translate the uh, by the axis amount. So we'll actually move a, a sprite on screen here in this case for this. Um, so this should cover the two different ways. Um, if you are wanting to read a button input and you want to read value, 
I don't know why, but for some reason it is read value float, not bool. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, also, if you're using a axis instead of a vector two, like the actual axis float, it is also going to be float here. Um, in our case, again, vector two for this particular circumstance. But these are basically the two main cases that I use the input system, and that is when you're uh, when you're reading the value directly and um, when you're uh, calling an event, basically. So uh, let's go try this, actually. So I'm just going to, so we have our game object here that has that on it. Let's go ahead and drop a sprite on it, a square in this case. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my uh, Xbox controller here. Um, I'm gonna let that connect. And uh, okay, so now if I press play, we have our object in the scene. Oh, that's moving by the axis amount every frame. Why is it moving like that? Um, translate by axis. Why is my axis one one? Um, let's make sure it's uh, dot delta time. It's probably my uh, controller dead zone or something. That looks a little better. Uh, so I can press WASD on my keyboard to move things around. I can move over to my controller and have a more smoother experience with the, the finer inputs of the, uh, the control stick on the controller. If I go over to my console here and then I press the A button, you'll see jumping is pressed. I can also press the space button. Oh, space button is not working for some reason. Let me just double check my input asset here. Uh, jump, did I add? I did add space keyboard. Hmm. Space button south. Try that again. Console, space. Yeah, the A is working, but space is not working. I'm not sure why. Let's just change it, see if that helps. Change from space to uh, E. Save asset, play. Uh, close that. So it's working. Oh, sorry, the, um, yeah, it was just because I had the console window uh, clicked, not the, the game window. So now it's working. If I go back to the space bar, it should work. Um, let's make that space again. This window makes it super easy to just switch inputs back and forth when you're trying new, uh, new inputs, new input schemes. Back to console here. Uh, if I click on the window and press space, it works. Yes, okay. And then pressing A on the controller also works. And then of course our moving works. So it makes it super easy to make cross control scheme games using the new input system without having to use this, the like fire one and stuff that's uh, built in the old system. Uh, it's super versatile. You can use it for things like XR devices or um, use it for mobile or anything else basically so uh yeah that's basically a summary of how i use the input system there's like a whole other way of using it with this uh player hang on player input where you can get it to like invoke unity events and then like so for each uh so the action asset is the that one there and then for each of these, you can have it call events in your script or in other scripts and stuff. So you can use that. Um, I don't like it. I don't. I prefer to do it directly in the uh, in the in the uh, script. But uh, yeah, there is that. So uh, yeah. So that's a basic overview on how I use Unity's new input system. And uh, yeah, have a great day, guys. See you in the next video.